You are watching Cold Fusion TV. Hi, welcome to another Cold Fusion video. The internet. It was originally born out of sheer panic of the United States after the launch of Sputnik 1 from the Soviets. Its aim was to further the chances of America surviving a catastrophic Soviet nuclear attack and also satisfy the need for faster knowledge transfer. But today, the internet stands for something very different. It has now become much larger, more influential and integral than any technology developed before. The internet has been around since the 1970s, but the public only gained access in 1991. But as with everything, there's been a few key moments that would lead to what it is today. But what are those key moments? And what are the stories behind the individuals and moments that would become the first steps in an incredible time for human history? In this episode, you'll hopefully learn something new and have a little bit of fun along the way. We'll go through the history of the internet looking at key moments that would change the world. Although somewhat disputed, the general consensus is that the first email was sent by Ray Tomlinson to himself in 1971. Here's a quote from him in an interview. I was actually working on a mail program, but it was programmed for a single computer so that you could send messages from yourself to another user on the same time sharing computer. And uh, I had written a couple of programs to transfer files and it occurred to me that since the mailbox that I was sending these messages to was nothing more than a file, I could send that file across the network instead of keeping it within the same machine. And so I put two programs together, modified the code a little bit, and the first email program was, was created. Ironically, what would become one of the most popular applications on the internet was a program Tomlinson wrote on his own time. It just seemed like an interesting thing to do with a computer and a network, and so I just did it. The funny thing is that he wrote the program for email in his own time, and nobody at his company really cared about it. It was also Ray that pioneered the use of the at sign for the email. The first website came online in late 1990. At the time, Tim Berners-Lee was working at CERN Laboratories. He wanted to make the internet easier to use. At the time, you literally had to be an expert in computer commands just to work the internet. He wanted to link information together and let users browse at will by themselves. What he had in mind was the World Wide Web. Well, it was in 1989, and the internet already existed and that you could send email, but there was no websites, so there was no HTTP, there was no HTML, there was no space or things you could click through. And it began because I was frustrated it didn't exist. <clears throat> I imagined a system where you could just click from one to the other, and that was so compelling that I decided that I wanted to uh, build it. And on the 20th of December 1990, the first web page was put up, and you're looking at it right now. For the first time, the internet was within reach of the average person. Everybody could use it now. The first web page was simply a little bit of a guide as to what the World Wide Web was and how to use it. The original page no longer exists, but a later copy from 1992 can be found at this web address. And here's a fun fact. As it turns out, the World Wide Web was built on a Next computer, and it was actually Steve Jobs who founded the company Next during his time away from Apple after being fired in 1985. If Steve Jobs hadn't been fired, we may not have the web as we know it. It's pretty interesting how things link together. So what was the first picture uploaded on the web? Again, it was Tim Berners-Lee, and this time for a bit of fun. In 1990, some of Tim's fellow employees at CERN formed a parody band. One day, in 1992, Tim asked to scan some of the photos and said that he wanted to publish them on some information system called the World Wide Web that he had just invented. They didn't really think much of it, and they handed over the photos. Little did they know that this was going to be a historic moment, the very first picture on the internet. What about the first search engine? Although internet search engines had been around for a while, even before the World Wide Web, they were very limited in nature and only contained a few pages. The first full text web browser search engine like the ones we have today is something that you've probably never heard about. It was called Webcrawler and was launched back in 1994. It wasn't until three and a half years later, when Google arrived on the scene, that Webcrawler basically faded into obscurity. In 1994, five years before the term blog was even coined, Justin Hall was doing just that. Justin's web-based diary was called Justin's Links from the Underground. It offered an early guide to the web, but drifted into personal territory over time. 
the New York Times Magazine referred to him as one of the founding fathers of personal blogging. It wasn't until 1997 that the term web blog was coined. This later got shortened to the word blog. The first mobile phone with internet. The first phone with internet connectivity was the Nokia N9000 communicator. It launched in Finland back in 1996, but unfortunately the actual cost of accessing the internet was so high that it was pretty much unsustainable. It wasn't until 1999 that iMode was launched in Japan and this was considered the birth of the mobile internet. Of course, the marriage between the mobile phone and the internet has gotten so large that it has completely changed society. The world's first internet celebrity. The first internet celebrity was Mihiru Kegri from Turkey. Anyone under the age of 25 is probably scratching their heads on who this guy is, but he was the original internet celebrity. In 1999, his website, kissy.org, established him as the first person to achieve celebrity status solely through the internet. His website was full of broken English and happy snaps. But by 2000, Bill Gates was even said to be one of his fans. Mahiro ended up in the Guinness Book of Records for the most page visits to a personal homepage, estimated at 12 million at the time. Some say that he was the original inspiration for the Borat movie in 2006. The first words ever said on Skype. The first words to be said on Skype weren't in English, but in Estonian, the mother tongue of the country that invented the technology. In April of 2003, five words were added by a member of the development team. The English translation was, hello, can you hear me? I guess it's only fitting. Who was the first Facebook user? Ignoring Facebook's current controversy and calls for Mark Zuckerberg to resign, it might be interesting to take a look at the very first person to sign up to Facebook. So who was it? The first real person on Facebook was actually ID number four. The first three accounts were just for user testing. As you can guess, ID number four was Mark Zuckerberg himself. The first non-founder to join Facebook was Ari Hasid, a university student from Israel. Now with around 2 billion monthly users, it's fair to say that he started something. The first YouTube video. So I'm sure a lot of you have probably seen this before, but the first video posted on YouTube was by Jared Karim at the San Diego Zoo. It was uploaded on April 23rd, 2005, and has been watched over 57 million times. Keep in mind that at the time when they posted this video, they had no idea how big YouTube was going to be. It was just a fun technical project for them. What was the first tweet? The first tweet was written by co-founder Jack Dorsey on March 21st, 2006. It simply read, just setting up my Twitter. So what about the first Instagram post? The first photo posted on Instagram was uploaded on July 26, 2010 by Instagram CEO and co-founder Kevin Systrom. It was a photo of his dog, a golden retriever, next to a taco stand. So we've traveled from 1971 to 2010. Many of the events that we've covered were the very first steps in movements that would change the way society interacts and communicates. So this last one is at the top of the list, not because of its date or significance, but because of its relevance to the modern internet. The first meme. It goes without saying that traditional memes have had their day and more often than not, they fade into obscurity pretty fast. The story of the first meme is actually pretty interesting and the answer depends on how you look at it. The very first meme could be recognized as the smiley face, it was first posted on the 19th of September, 1982 by Scott Fahlman during his time at Carnegie Mellon University. He noticed that there was no way of expressing human emotion between text-based forum conversations between computers. Because of this, it was chaos. At the time, jokes would be taken the wrong way and lengthy flame wars would ensue. Scott came up with the elegant solution of a smiley face and it soon caught on quickly and spread to other universities. We were being silly late at night. We were sending these things around, uh, messages, and I proposed this thing. And I thought it was just another silly message that I sent. You know, I didn't keep a copy of it. And I noticed about a week later that people were starting to use it around Carnegie Mellon. A couple of weeks later that we got a message back from some colleagues on the west coast of the U.S. Uh, and they were using it too now. And they were starting to make these long lists, you know, of many different uh, emoticons. I only claim responsibility for the, the colon minus and the parenthesis, or the smiley face and the frowny face with the nose. So some of you would not be satisfied with that definition of me. So let's take a look at the first meme that is recognizable as a meme today. This meme is simply known as the dancing baby. 
It was first set loose on the 22nd of October 1996. The Dancing Baby originated as a collection of experimental testing data files of a product sample for a then groundbreaking 3D character animation software. The software was called Character Studio. This baby was the first truly viral meme as we know it today. It found its way onto hit shows at the time like Ally McBeal and Third Rock from the Sun and even The Simpsons. And many of you who are old enough will still immediately recognise it today. So there you go. So that is literally how many aspects of the internet that you're used to seeing and using every day started out. But there's a bit of a sombre tone to the end of this video. As many of you may or may not know, the internet as we know it will be coming to an end in early 2019. This is thanks to the European Union. Originally an organisation which was meant to facilitate free trade and free travel within Europe, but slowly grew out of control when no one seemed to notice. Now the organisation is so powerful that these unelected leaders has decided to write their own laws that will result in the backbone of the internet, hyperlinks, actually being taxed, and copyright laws so strict that all websites including YouTube, social media, or any website at all that just allows users to post, will be forced not to allow user content and only allow content from trusted parties to avoid liability under these new regulations. The result will most likely be that only big companies will be allowed to post content because they own the rights and the website hosts can trust them and everybody else gets left out. This proposal is known as Article 13. There are real concerns about the effect of Article 13 on freedom of expression raised by experts ranging from the UN Special Rapporteur David Kaye to the inventor of the World Wide Web, Sir Tim Berners-Lee. And there are real concerns voiced by our citizens. Just yesterday, I received a petition signed by almost a million people against the jury committee mandate. Huge controversy still exists about the methods proposed. Something's not right here. If you want to know more about it, I'll leave some links below where you can explore more and see what you can do to save the internet. Sorry I had to end on that note, but at least we can be grateful for the internet that we have now, and hopefully we can do something about Article 13. Anyway, thanks for watching, this has been Dagogo. If you just stumbled across this channel, feel free to subscribe, and I'll catch you again soon for the next one. Cheers guys. Have a good one.